the science behind the search for extraterrestrial life in the universe has made significant leaps in recent years, mainly due to improving equipment. Where it was once a matter largely of searching for powerful alien radio signals, SETI and the search for extraterrestrial life in general now enjoy a host of possible bio and technosignatures that we may look for above and beyond radio. With the budding but growing ability to search for exoplanets and ultimately characterize their atmospheres, thought within astrobiology has moved into searching for gases that tend to be indicative of life in a biosphere, or even industry on other worlds. This has led to debate about if certain gases truly mean life, or if they can also be created without life, such as through geological processes. Methane is a good example of this which can have both biological and geological sources. And this is not always entirely clear. This has most notably shown itself in the recent potential detection of phosphine gas on Venus, which could be due to some non-biological process, but it's still very much on the table that it could actually be due to microbial life. Two recent papers have come out that make the case for a further two chemicals that could be looked for in the atmospheres of exoplanets that could indicate life. The first is the organic compound isoprene. This compound is strongly associated with life on Earth. In fact, you're exhaling small amounts of it right now. Big producers of isoprene on Earth are the trees. Oak trees particularly produce a lot of this chemical but it's also associated with many other biological processes, and in fact was first discovered by a scientist studying natural rubber in the 19th century. With trees in particular, isoprene helps them deal with heat stress. It seems to protect the trees from the wide variation in leaf temperature as the day progresses. Consequently, they seem to produce very little isoprene at night as opposed to the daylight. But despite isoprene being emitted by biology on Earth on levels comparable to methane, it doesn't last long in the atmosphere and rapidly reacts away. Isoprene is also produced industrially on Earth, mainly in the oil industry, and is used to make synthetic rubber. But what of a biosignature here? Could the production of isoprene by plant analogs on other worlds be detected? In a paper by Zi Zhan and colleagues, link in the description below, they detailed that it may be possible, at least under certain circumstances. This compound reacts strongly with oxygen-containing radicals, so it won't stick around in an Earth-like atmosphere, at least how the atmosphere currently is. But without oxygen, it may persist much longer under the right conditions. Indeed, life on Earth arose in an anoxic atmosphere, and only oxygenated it later when photosynthesis developed. Life on early Earth might have been detectable through the production of isoprene. But actually detecting isoprene is complicated. It can look like methane. Isoprene is also destroyed in photochemical processes and possibly in other reactions including with hydrogen. But in certain circumstances with the right planetary atmosphere and the right star, it may be possible to detect isoprene. And the one advantage that it has is that there currently isn't any known way to produce it other than biology and technology. That, of course, can change, however, if someone thinks of another mechanism. The second signature is very different. This would both be a biosignature and a technosignature, and can indicate life, but also be an indication of industrial pollution in an exoplanet's atmosphere. It's nitrogen dioxide and there are some interesting attributes to this chemical as far as exoplanets go. In a paper by Ravi Kaparapu and colleagues, linked below, they detail that detecting this gas might actually get easier as you look at smaller stars, type M red dwarfs and type K orange dwarf stars. This is because the wavelengths of light that they produce won't break down this molecule as readily as it would happen around larger stars, allowing for concentrations to accumulate to detectable levels with current instruments. But this may be a problematic technosignature in that our production of this gas is dropping. It's largely produced through combustion, so can be produced by forest fires and lightning and other processes, but the large amounts needed for detection from a distance would more likely be produced by an industrial civilization, especially one burning fossil fuels. That again raises the question of how long civilizations use fossil fuels, or if they ever do at all, and how long that would be visible. 
but our civilization isn't likely to stop using them completely anytime soon. Others may be the same. Another problem with this technosignature is that it could be complicated by how a planetary atmosphere actually is. In a perfect cloudless scenario, the nitrogen dioxide should be visible if there is enough of it. But in a situation where an exoplanet has significant cloud cover, the nitrogen dioxide might be masked. This is a problem. Looking at the rocky planets of the solar system that have significant atmospheres, you see constantly cloudy Venus, Earth with its myriad of clouds, and even Mars with its very diffuse but still present clouds. Clouds are common. Yet it stands as a possibility, especially in regards to K-type orange dwarfs, which have been advanced to be very good for life, perhaps even more ideal than the Sun, with a much longer lifetime where a civilization could have plenty of time to develop. The good news is current and near future instrumentation are likely to shed light on nearby exoplanet atmospheres, and maybe, just maybe, one of these days we'll see one of these two chemicals, and the debate as to whether they mean life or even a civilization will begin. Thanks for listening, I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently worried about my next door neighbor, Alternative Universe JMG. He just ran into the house, which he calls the Event Horizon, yelling to someone named Anna about New Planet Nine news coming on Thursday, and I thought I saw a possum run into the house with him. Very odd neighbor indeed, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular, in-depth explorations of the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.